Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about Blue Black Sedgemore Witch. This is a controlling deck. So far on the channel, we focused on a lot of decks that are really cool and exciting and kind of testing the boundaries of the format. But this one is looking to really, really sweaty and kind of take a really spiky position in the metagame. So let's hop right into it. The central idea behind this deck is that Sedgemore Witch is really, really strong and so is Leer. And so we're going to try to play a bunch of cards that complement those cards. So you're going to see we only have three Leers despite playing a deck that complements her and four Sedgemore which three layers is more of a concession to the legendary role than anything it's pretty easy to find her thanks to a couple of the cards we're about to go over but ultimately the only ways to win are those plus every now and again handsome soren the mirthless uh soren's ability to get a little bit of extra card band for a plus one and kind of dark confidant impersonation is pretty good but honestly i found this card to just be a thing that kind of soaks up damage and builds a little bit of a board presence with the vampires soren has been really really good for me and i'm really happy to have this card in the deck speaking of cards that have been really really good for me i'm happy to have them in the deck it's one that's a little awkward actually when you look at the deck overall and there's probably better homes for guys channeler in this deck but still this card's been so great guys channel is one to blue for a human wizard one three when Geist Chandler enters the battlefield, you choose an instant or sorcery card in your hand with mana value three or greater. It perpetually gains. This spell costs two less to cast. So that is really strong with our divide by zeros, turning them into one mana interaction that can you know, be a, a pseudo counter spell or an unsummon or whatever. Our thirst for discoveries are also incredibly great. And our discover the formula, which is just a one of, but when you hit this card, its ability to take over the game is kind of unmatched. So we'll talk about dis uh, Discover the Formula in just one second. But first, the really big part of Guy's Chandler to keep in mind is that we do have the lessons in our sideboard. So we have Teachings of the Archaic and Mascot Exhibition when it wants to show up for me as it hides down here. Uh, and divide by zeroing and then hitting a ma Mascot Exhibition is really strong with Guy's Chandler. This turns into a five mana play, and the thing we've kind of alluded to but haven't talked about is how insane that is with Lear the Drowned Disciple. Lear lets you cast the spells again from your graveyard, and since they're perpetually cheaper, it's so much easier to actually work these double spells in and just unlocks our Lear even more. It's truly insanely powerful. And along those lines, Discover the Formula, which we alluded to earlier, does a similar thing. So for four blue blue instant, you seek which is basically it will pull from your deck three cards that are not lands then the non-land cards your hand perpetually gain this spell costs one less to cast so what does that mean you got a little bit of head scratcher it means for six mana you're going to always get three spells and those spells are going to all be one less that can turn most of our deck actually into one and two mana spells we actually have a fair number of one mana spells which kind of clash a bit with discover the formula but ultimately this deck just wants a way to refuel and discover the formula works so well with our leer as well often you'll even find like a leer so discover the formula has been a great one of in this deck it's kind of taking the spot of one of our thirst for discoveries in the list which is a two and a blue instant you draw three and then you discard two cards unless you discard a basic land card with this deck you really are trying to kind of overwhelm them with spells not let them get too much traction on the board and then you establish a Sedmore Witch or a Leer and you take over the game. So Thirst for Discovery, kind of a, a medium version of Discover the Formula. Super importantly, it costs three mana. So we need some of that stuff to smooth out the early game. If you look at our kill spells here in the slots, we just have uh, Infernal Grasp, Empower Word Kill and Blood Chief's Thirst. Pretty basic stuff. Fading Hope does a nice little kill spell impersonation against tokens, which there are plenty of in the format and is also just so powerful with Leer. If you haven't played with it, having a Leer uh, played when you have six mana up, or sometimes five if you have any perpetually things decreasing the Leer's cost, which does come up, you'd be surprised. Uh, you're able to play the Leer, and then the Fading Hope will protect the Leer if they try to answer it. So that matters a lot in more controlling games where the removal spells don't get used quite as much. Uh, while against creature decks, you're pretty happy just to trade three mana for one with a witch in play or working towards the Leer endgame that will overpower most everything. Let's get into the sideboard real quick here. We have two Ray of Enfeeblement. Uh, this is an instant for a black that says target creature gets minus four, minus one until end of turn. If that creature is white, it gets minus four, minus four instead. So I actually bring this in against decks with a reasonable amount of X ones. You sometimes run into like mono red decks on the ladder. But obviously this card's really good against the white decks, which we showed on this channel earlier. And those white decks are very, very good. They have been proven, I think, personally to be one of the mainstays of alchemy in the early days. So I want to have a little bit of oomph for them. I have two Malevolent Hermit. 
There have been some big over-the-top decks running around, so I'm trying to have a little bit of ability to go under them. And along the same lines for control decks and combo decks, we have the classic two go blank. I think go blank is really strong. I think Leer is a really big part of this format at the higher levels. So I always want to make sure we're prepared for the Leer metagame. Then we have two Disdainful Stroke. This card's actually just good against a lot of decks. The Mono Green deck's got some serious upgrades. It into Ren and Seven is still insane. Ren and Seven's still insane. So Mono Green, a deck to stay around for sure. And Disdainful Stroke's just so good against them and the blue red decks that I'm really happy to have some of these on our sideboard. Negate, once again, for the combo thing. We're really doing a lot of switching cards around. You know, we have a lot of... We have six kill spells in our main deck, right? So against those big decks, we have two Negate, two Disdainful Stroke, two Hermit. And that's our little swap there. So keep in mind that sort of thing when you're sideboarding with this deck. Then we have one Desert Doom. Lilmreth. Love this card's name. So cool, and the art's amazing. But more importantly... This card's just a great way to get a little bit of extra oomph and control mirrors and kind of these mid-range you where they try to out Carvan you and stuff like that, or their plan is like, you know, uh, I'm gonna try to just invalidate these things. No, this card's gonna dominate the game when it comes down. So easy to protect this thing. It's like a Leer and a half, you know, but doesn't have the legendary clashing with the other Leer. So we have that. And then we have the three lessons like we talked about earlier, one mascot, one environmental sciences and one teaching of the archaics. These three are kind of the basic lesson package. Shouldn't be much of a surprise there. If you're looking at this deck and you're thinking, wow, how do I ever beat decks that get on the board and kind of take over? That is a bit of a problem, but you can change your deck up to beat that. So keep in mind that you can switch your basics for snow basics, as you'll see with the deck here, we have five of each basic. And as always, the description has the deck list for you. So click down there if you want to see it in its full text form. You can make the change to make those snow basics and then add a couple blood in the snow in the deck. If you do that, maybe you want to trim the discover the formulas. Uh, those sort of cards are probably kind of at odds if you're doing that sort of thing and not a bigger controlling deck. This deck does kind of play the beat down some percentage of the time. So you want to make sure to make the proper changes there. But yeah, cut a couple discover the formulas bring a couple of the blood in the snows, and then boom, you're gonna actually be able to pretty easily trade off enough for them to redeploy their whole hand, and then boom, blood in the snow, bring back a sore and take over the game. Uh, this deck is super great. It is a lot of fun to play. I've played it since it's basically its reveal at the SCG con slash invitational back in October, and it's been a blast to play, and it's cool to see it in historic with some new cards. So make sure to check this deck out on the ladder. 